Hi, my name's Paul Baines, I'm Professor of Political Marketing at Cranfield School of Management and this is Red, Virgin Media's Chief Values Officer. In the next clip, you'll see an interview with Richard Larkham, Director of Advertising and Sponsorship at Virgin Media. In the clip, he articulates a common problem in marketing and that's how does a company differentiate itself in a cluttered market space? Um, hello, um, my name is uh, Richard Larkham. I'm uh, Director of Advertising and Sponsorship at Virgin Media. I've been here about three years and my remit kind of covers um, kind of brand strategy, um, above the line communication, so kind of, you know, sort of TV, um, cinema, that type of thing, um, social, uh, retail marketing, um, brand activation and partnership, so things like V Festival, Virgin Media Shorts um, and media strategy. Um, so that's kind of what I do here um, and um, yeah it's an absolutely kind of fantastic brand, um, fantastic company. Um, we work in a, a very noisy neighbourhood um, with two big competitors in um, BT and Sky that kind of keep us on our toes. I think Virgin Media is uh, a unique brand. Um, it is one of the most admired brands in the world. Um, and I think its brand is its greatest strength. Um, I think also from a product point of view, we have a unrivaled infrastructure in our um, uh, fiber optic cable network. And I think finally, we are an open source platform. So in many respects, you could see us as um, the ultimate aggregator. So we are completely open and we're open to work with the best um, applications in the UK, whether it's Spotify, um, the best content providers in the UK, whether it's Sky. Um, and, and so actually what we want to do is rather than necessarily create ourselves, of which we might do a little bit moving forward into the future, we want to be completely open to get the best of breed for our customers. Within our marketing, digital has always played a really important role. We are a technology brand, we're an entertainment brand, and therefore we need to be part of um, what's going on in the, in the digital space. But I think kind of aside from that, um, we know just from a sales point of view, actually our sales have started to erode from a call point of view, from a sales, from, 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 a, from a field sales point, point of view, from a retail, point of view and actually that's been um, taken up by our exponential growth in the digital space. So for example in the last two years we've seen um, our online sales um, rise from about 9% to about 28%. So I think the importance of it is only going to continue. When we look at actually the customer lifetime value of digital customers versus um, other areas of the business actually um, so we we look at two metrics we look at CLV which is customer lifetime value and also we look at um, NPS and NPS is net promoter score which which is a measure of um, satisfaction or dissatisfaction of a customer now actually interestingly retail is um, the area of the business that drives um, the best scores and that's probably because you have an interaction with people. It's kind of very, very much a kind of a face-to-face -face sale. But also you have a, a clear demonstration of the product that you're about to, to, to buy. I think when we look at other channels such as outbound, inbound or digital, it's actually much, much harder to kind of separate the dif difference between those customers. I think when we consider the role of digital with, within our marketing, I think we kind of need to look at the role of technology per se. And I think for us, technology has three benefits. It's about improving communication. It's about bringing you closer to the things you love. And it's about making life simpler and easier and a bit more convenient. So then the question is, what role does Virgin Media play using technology and particularly in the digital space and the social space? And for us, it's about better connections. So it's about better connections with prospects better connections with customers, and most importantly, it's about Virgin Media enabling better connections of those customers and prospects and their lives. So when we look at better connections, we look at three specific um, silos, if you will, that kind of ladder up to um, uh, enable us to kind of realize that promise. And that's across help, 
discovery and entertainment. And hopefully those are kind of relatively self, um, kind of, um, uh, sort of, um, they explain themselves. So those are the silos, but then we actually have a model. So we have a model that help entertain and discovery kind of feed into. And so this is all about advocacy. So we need to attract people to our social platforms. We need to stimulate them. We need to encourage participation. We need to reward that participation. We need to encourage sharing, and that leads to advocacy. And so that's really the kind of model that we apply across YouTube, across Facebook, across Twitter, across you know all of those platforms out there. And we're using help, education, and discovery in that journey. So the challenge we face is that we are in a saturated, commoditized market. So growth is really, really hard to come by. Therefore, the business objective for this particular campaign was about retention marketing. It was about stemming churn. We also know that from a customer behavior point of view, people are using broadband more and more. Therefore, we need to land our competitive advantage, that is our fiber optic network, particularly when you have BT hot on our heels with a product that is quite similar in infinity, but are very, very difficult to differentiate. So when you actually looked at things like Millwood Brown tracking, we actually saw the distance between ourselves and BT over the last 18 months um, shortening in terms of superiority of fiber. Therefore, we needed to do something transformational and game-changing in order to say, Virgin Media Fiber, actually no one comes close. And that's really the um, thinking behind doubling broadband speeds for this campaign. I think there'd be an additional reason why we would double people's broadband speeds, not just because um, they need greater speeds to um, uh, seamlessly live their di digital lives, if you will, I think the other is we want people to do more with their broadband. We want them to actually kind of flex that pipe as much as possible because by doing that then we will actually have a much deeper relationship with that customer and therefore the more a customer, uh, the more a customer uses a product or a service the much deeper the relationship you will have with them and therefore if we come back to our original churn objective that's something that would um, you know, kind of be much, much harder for them to walk away from. So if you're taking a DSL customer into a fiber space and then a Virgin Media fiber space, actually the difference should be quite pronounced. The first key element of any campaign is to be noticed and to be heard. And I think that digital and particularly social is a superb platform which is a two-way conversation in real time that actually enables campaigns to get talked about and actually you can have campaigns that um, run from the top down or you can have campaigns that are created from the bottom up and this particular campaign needed notoriety because we operate in a commoditized market there's actually quite boring, broadband is quite boring. People see it as a dumb pipe, we see it as a um, entertainment enabler, but actually it's a bit like electricity. You know, it's not something that people necessarily think about. So what we had to do was we had to kind of punctuate that apathy with something that was irreverent and actually something that created talkability. So we did that through the use of Usain Bolt, through the use of Richard Branson, and through use of some clever media ideas. But, but I think critically, because our budgets are limited, we needed to create a story that could run and run, that could run across Twitter by the hijacking of Richard Branson and Usain Bolt switching, and through various competitions where actually um, our Facebook fan base could send in pictures of themselves, who they might be you know, um, uh, look-alikes you know, of other famous people. But I think what's critical for us actually now when we look at campaigns is it's not just the big TV spot. It is one, what is the total integrated approach? And actually, how can we continue that conversation once the big 
five million pound TV campaign has finished. And I think social plays an absolute kind of key role in that. The campaign was the most successful uh, retention campaign in the history of Virgin Media, um, which is absolutely fantastic. It means I can stay in my day job for another couple of months, I think. Um, and so from a, we judged it from a um, NPS point of view, actually, so kind of net promoter score in terms of um, uh, uh, the reasons why people were staying with Virgin Media. So just judging their satisfaction of broadband as a product and Virgin Media as a business. But in addition to that, it was voted the, um, uh, the best campaign of the year by the kind of trade press. Um, it generated the biggest PR of any campaign that we've ever um, created. Um, fast, um, fast um, broadband rather than cheap broadband um, uh, uh, um, was the number one search term um, on Google. Uh, when we looked at actually the reasons why uh, people would join Virgin Media through a new joiner survey that happens quarterly. Um, super fast fibre optic broadband was the number one reason and that was the first time. So there are, I, th I think, any number of metrics that showed that the campaign was a, um, um, that got a gold medal.